going to turn my microphone back on to make sure that my audio gets recorded. Otherwise, it would just be a, like a silent movie. Okay, good. Okay, now the first thing I would think we need to be done is we need to tie this roof in to the existing roof because th this roof is tied into the existing roofs, I would assume. Okay, that's really, I mean, for a person experienced like me, this is no big deal. But for a, a person who's kind of a casual user, this is going to be new territory I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to click on this roof plane here. <coughs> oh, the first thing I need to do, I assume you have Home Designer Pro, right? Okay, so I'm going to, do you have Home Designer Pro 2019? Okay, good. Okay, no, no problem. Now I'm gonna mark it here in my software to allow editing and, and select home designer products, which w when I send this plan file back to you, you'll be able to continue working it just like you, all, you always did. If I, if I didn't do that, then you wouldn't be able to. Okay, now I'm gonna click on this roof plane and use the break line tool right there in the edit toolbar. This is the edit toolbar down here, I'm gonna pull it off so you can see that it actually says edit on it. And we'll click on that, and then click right about there. And that'll break this, this line here into two lines. And then I can take this line and go up roof with it. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, now that I've created that this new line here, <clears throat> is click on the edge of this roof plane and use the join roofs tool. This one here, left click, and then select the edge I want it to join to and left click and, and you'll see it join. Probably something similar to what it is on your house. I'm going to do the same thing on the on the left side. Left click, break line. To break this into two two rep, two rep plane edges instead of just one. And then I'm going to select this new edge that I created. Join roof planes and then select the other roof plane edge that I want to join to and it should do the same thing it did on the yeah it did but to finish this up this edge here needs to ridge with this so again I'm going to use the uh, join roofs tool left click and select the other roof plane left click and then that that should be pretty much how it is on your house okay Sure. Mm-hmm. Say that again, please. No, let me, uh, let me allow you to uh, use, use mouse control on there. Just a moment, uh, I can enable that. Just give me a minute to find a command. Uh, no, that's not it. Yep. Just give me a minute to find the command. Remote control, I found it. Okay, give mouse and let me I'm, let me say something about this. We both can't be moving the mouse and inputting on the keyboard at the same time because that action just cancels out the action of the other. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put my no my hands are in my lap and and please uh, do as you're gonna do. What you'll need to do is find a place on the screen. Let me move back a little bit. Like over here in this wide area, left click. And then move the mouse, and I'll be. I should then be. Yeah, I can see you're moving the mouse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, that depends on where you place this roof plane in the first place. So I'm going to go back to plan view for that. I'm, I'm going to let me have the mouse again. 
Okay, I'll wait until you get back then. I want you to see this. Okay. Now, is it 71 inches from the outside of the uh, siding here or somewhere else? Okay. One thing I noticed was that this in, this uh, roof plane has been uh, improperly drawn. I just now noticed it. Uh, what I noticed was this line is not straight, and it's off off. Uh, it's not plumb, so we may need to start over. Let me. And also, the roof base lines are turned off. Let me turn those on. We go over here to the R's and find. There's roof planes, but roof baselines are very important for properly locating roof planes, and those are turned off. Perhaps. Okay, there, there's the roof baseline, and, and you can see that the roof base, the roof baseline is not straight. So we're gonna have to delete the roof plane and start over. There's no uh, there's no way to straighten out a roof plane if it's drawn wrong in the first place. I didn't notice that, so I'm going to delete that. And then we'll do this properly by, uh, now you said from the fascia, the fascia of what? Yeah. Remember you have to left click on the screen and then move the mouse. There you go. Uh huh. There's a, there's a beam there. We can do that too if you like. Yeah, you're getting internet lag, and when you're working on my computer, you're working on it through se several thousand miles, of, and that causes the lag. Mm-hmm, I do. Mm-hmm. Of the existing roof. roof. Okay. Let me have the mouse and then I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to draw, I, I selected the line tool here. I'm going to draw a line and let it snap to the, there. And I'm going to take this line and using the transform replicate tool, I'm going to move that selected object, with, which is that CAD line. I'm going to move it down screen. That would be minus Y. And what's the figure, 51 inches? 54, okay. Click okay, and there it is. And I can use this as a reference to draw the baseline of, of the roof. Now I'm gonna go to, uh, and just click on the roof planes tool to select it, and then let my cursor snap to that CAD line. I'm gonna draw the baseline of that roof right on that line, and then drag my mouse up in the direction I want it to slant and left click. Now, your existing roof has overhang, does it not? Okay, and what's the pitch of, the, of that roof? Do you, do you remember? Okay, we'll set that to 312. Now, before I go any further, let me go in, the, uh, in an elevation camera and we'll just take a look at this area relative to the existing roofs and evaluate the veracity of it. It looks like it's a little bit high fascia wise. This fascia should match this fascia, isn't that correct? Okay, 
So the way to do that is I'm going to click out on the uh, adjacent roof plane, open this dialog box, and find out what the uh, fascia height is, and copy that. I just wanted to get that data. Now I'm going to open this 312 that we just is properly located in plan view, but just not in the Z axis. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to double click on it, open the dialog box, lock the pitch with the radio button so that the pitch doesn't change when I change the spatial top value, and then paste it in there and click OK, and you'll see it drop down and into alignment with the adjacent roof plane, see? Well, it's, it's an advanced procedure, and, and I've been using the software for over 20 years, so, you know, I've had to do this before. Uh, just to man, as a matter of interest, you might wonder what this artifact here is. You see that? And that comes, let me just show you. You go over to the structure tab of, of the roof plane, and you go over here to the, the framing side, is, and you've got your, uh, and these are kind of generic settings out of the box, but <clears throat> what you're looking at is you've got a, a two by 10 rafter. I don't know if your house has two by 10 rafters or not, but this model has its rafters set to two by 10s. See it there? And the fascia, is only seven and a half inches. And so that's what's causing that artifact. That's the bottom of the rafter. And it's just a, you know, no, no carpenter worth his salt is gonna pay any attention to that. And the house is still gonna get built properly, even if you don't fix this. But that, I just wanted you to understand what that, what that visual artifact is. Now, I'm gonna close this and go back to, uh, <clears throat> plan view and then do what I did before the left click left click and join ropes and left click and see now this is straight okay. and you just don't want to do anything a, a carpenter isn't going to build the roof line out of plumb so there's no reason for us to do it that way either Okay, now we're back to where we were, but now everything's plumb. And then the next thing you would do is draw another roof plane with a baseline. And the baseline is where the, the roof plane transfers its load to the structural wall. And that's... Huh? Yeah. Oh, of course, up to the baseline, I would assume, like that. Okay. Now, I drew this one here, and it, and it came in at the default setting in the build roofs dialog of 812. Now, we don't know what this, the pitch of this is going to be, but we want it to go to not truncate the ceiling, so that's the reason I just drew it out here. Let me just show you where we're at right now. I'm going to draw a backflip cross-section through the one I just drew and the new one I just drew. See, this one's at 812, this one's at 312, and we need this to c connect here, I would assume. Sure. It's high, however high you set the ceiling height to in this di room dialog box. So you'd open the room dialog box, go to the structure tab, and that's, it's set to 96 inches. Well, we can check it in the elevation camera, not that camera, but this camera. We can, again, I'm gonna draw a CAD line on the floor, make it plumb, and then take it, and I'm gonna, I do this a lot, because I don't trust the software and its dialogues, I want to check it with in a camera like this so that I can control everything. I'm going to raise that line up 96 inches in the Z axis and bingo. See, so 
It's saying 96, and it actually is 96. No. I'm sorry, say again, please. Okay, well, do you want this one to be eight foot tall or 10 foot tall? Yeah, you're, you're correct. You're, you're right. Your reasoning's correct. Now, what we want to do next is make this roof plane meet this roof plane so that we get, you know, something like that. And it looks like it's just going to be continue out at 312 to be. Well, let's, let's check that. I'm going to open the line and go over here to uh, the uh, number style, and I want it to display uh, pitch instead of angle. I'm going to go to uh, line. So, it, it, yeah, look at that. It's 2 and 15 sixteenths 12, the, the cat line that I drew. So it's going to be pretty close to just an ex extend this one straight down in the same slope. And uh, we probably don't even need this, this roof plane here. We can just extend this one. You want this plane to be have, have skylights in it? Okay. We'll probably have to emulate that in the software as a skylight because you can't put a window in a roof plane in this software. Is that okay? I mean, we could draw a, a skylight there and then put some text on it and say that's a window. And list, you, you list the model number and they'll get a ride and so forth. So I'm gonna delete this rough plane and just extend this one. Now let's just take another look at that because this is probably gonna, gonna extend this line right here. Yeah, it's going to make it the ceiling slightly lower than 96 inches if we just extend this one straight down. Is that okay? Okay, very good. Now I'm going to get out of this camera and not save it and delete this roof plane. And we'll click on the one that is there and extend it. Uh, what's the overhang value? Well, it's not. Well, I moved the cat line. Let me undo that. To the right, they're collinear, so it's not that hard to do. That's the cat line. Let me hit the tab key and see if I can get the roof plane. There, I got it. It's 12. Okay, so I'm going to pull it out out there and then click here and set it to 12. <clears throat> now you can see that it left some uh, some coverage here because it just extended this valley line down. So again we're going to have to manually step in and tell the software what to do. I'm going to click here and then break it where this angle is intersects and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side right there now this new line that i've just created i can tell it to be plumb for this wall and then we want 12 inches overhang over here as well okay, so I'm gonna, there's the automatic dimension I, I don't know if that's yeah that's measuring in the right place we'll set it to 12. You can't always assume that automatic dimensions are measuring from where you, you think they're measuring from, so it's always a good idea to check. Uh, lots of people I work with, I, I explain to them that this software is pretty intelligently made, but in and of itself, it is not intelligent. It's as stupid as, as a watermelon. <laughs> and uh, a lot of newer users can you know, grant this software more beingness than it really should have. It's just a mechanical device and you have to provide the intelligence and the judgment because it, it 
in and of itself and has no judgment and no intelligence. Now, I think that's about it. Let's take a look at it. Now, yeah, that looks like this would come cut in under. And I think that's how it would end up. And uh, those gaps that were there before have been automatically filled in by the software, filling in those little gaps there. <coughs> so that's how the cow eats the cabbage on that. <laughs> what else do we need to fix on this? Well, I just hope, again, I'm going to open the dialog box and ask, ask it what it says, and it's at zero inches. So I probably like the rest of the house. Is that where it's, it's supposed to be, or is it supposed to be higher or lower? Sure, no problem. Commonly, rooms like that are, are about minus three inches relative to the house for drainage purposes in case some uh, uh, precipitation blows in there, it won't just run into the house. So it's a common convention to set the floors of such rooms slightly lower. Okay. Well, it, okay. So we would uncheck default here and change the value to minus 4.5. And that's not going to affect anything else we've done. It's just going to lower the floor by four and a half inches. And you, you can verify that for yourself using, an, again, an elevation camera. I'm going to use it. And you'll see that the, the floor of this room is now four and a half inches lower than the, the adjacent room. No. Again, the floor is set in this room by the dialog box. The software doesn't know, know that unless you tell it. So you've got it set here to uh, wood, wood structural floor, not, not four inch slab. Is that what you want? Okay, then you would uncheck default, click on edit. I'm gonna delete the uh, uh, OSV that was on top there and we'll change this to uh, four inches and then change the material from wood which would, wouldn't have to concrete that's what i mean by the, the uh software's not going to read your mind you have to carefully and methodically change make these changes is there a floor finish on this floor or is it a concrete floor Well, we see the software is putting seven eighths of an inch of uh, hardwood floor on it. And if that's not true, then we need to take, remove this. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that and delete that. And now it says zero. And so it'll, it'll show four inches of concrete and nothing else because we, because we told it to. Now you go back to the uh, elevation camera and you'll see that change. And the, the height of the floor hasn't changed, just the nature of it structurally. Now, I don't know what this is, but that there's a four inch slab sitting on uh, concrete uh, stem walls and in footings. This, I'd have to do some research to find out what it is. And, uh, relative to creating plans, it's not important. Okay, you, you want to pursue that? <clears throat> I'm going down to the foundation and checking its dialog box and see what you have told it either by default or by Okay, it's got a four inch floor. I don't know if 
I don't think you'd probably have a four inch slab on, on the uh, on the foundation, would you? Okay. So there's no floor under this room. There's no flat ceiling. There's no roof over this room. See, you have to be very literal because this is a mechanical computer device and, and it just has presettings and they may be correct and they may not. You have to check and, and make sure. So, uh, let's see, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, floor under the, okay, so floor under this room is now unchecked, so I think that, that should handle it. I'm gonna go back and check it again in a back clip and see if that uh, artifact is still there. <coughs> And that's still there. Let me see if I can see it in a different camera type because in this cam in an elevation camera, it doesn't show up all that well. I'm going to use a. See, it doesn't show in the in this camera view. There's no artifact. Let's do a full uh, this kind of camera and check again. Now I think. Uh, would you point at what you see? Yeah. Okay. It, that again is a matter of the software is not perfect. Let's zoom in and see what's causing that. Okay. The, seems like uh, the footing's thicker over here than it is over here. But. Let me say this about that. This is a virtual model and its whole purpose is to guide building professionals to the result that you intend. And in and of itself, you're never going to live in this house and you're never going to walk around on the, on its floors. It's a, it's, it's a, just a graphic communication to guys who know how to build so that they can present what you, what it is that you want. And so this doesn't have to be perfect. It's nice. That's not important. It has to be good enough so that it doesn't mislead your, your building professionals from the result that you intend, but that's all. See, there's, we're probably just seeing this offset in the, in this wall here and this wall here, perhaps. Oh, okay. Say that again, please. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, what do you mean by breakout separate exactly? Okay. The way I would do it, I'm going to go here to build wall and hatch wall. See that? Okay. Then with that tool active, I can click on that wall and it adds a hatch to it. And then I'm going to click on this wall and this wall. Now I'm going to go to the text tools with the arrow and text. I'm going to create an arrow on there and then go to the right a little bit and left click and add it with all caps. And then even the plan checker at the city should be smart enough to be able to see that that's what's true about that. I'm going to make this arrow a little more prominent. 
that's all that's all I on remodeling jobs and on uh, of all kinds this is what I do and this is what most permit authorities recommend is that you make the new wall stand out and this this hatch is on a layer in display options you go over here to walls hatch walls I believe it is let me find it here it is walls hatching see it's on a layer and so you can turn it on or turn it off you can control it now that it's in place and for, our, for your purposes I think you want to leave it on because it, it's very clear that these walls over here exist and these walls over here exist and these ones are new now our beam I'm going to go over to the build menu framing and select a tool down here and it should be roof beam I believe yeah there it is roof beam see it left click and find that uh, roof face line I want to draw it not on the CAD line but on the roof face line and left left click and drag a beam and this is just saying that layer is not currently turned on. Is it okay to turn it on? Yeah, we want it on. So I'm going to click on it on this end and extend it and pull it into the wall just a little bit. And commonly, uh, those things have a, a beam pocket. And to do this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so I can have finer control. Yeah, that's about right. And then the left side, yeah, I've got it too far, too far in there. Move over. Yeah, well, this, this object has a dialog box. Let me open it. And then we can change its dimensions here. It comes in defaulted at uh, it's three and a half inches uh, <clears throat> wide, and the type is lumber. Is it going to be some different type? LBL. Okay, but that's three LBLs. And this is just one object. So what is the width of one LBL, the width of one LBL? Okay, so we change the width to 1.75. And now we've got one LBL here. See, now th there's the one. I'm going to use a transform replicate. Okay. It's centered under the uh, baseline of the roof, and that's where it goes. That's, that's false. The beam has to be at the point that the load is transferred to the beam. And that's where the two roof lanes come together, not somewhere else. Okay, if you say so. Okay. Okay, so right now it's right at the uh, load bearing point and you want to move it 17 inches up roof instead. Okay. So again, I'm just going to, I'm going to click what? Okay. Well, I'm going to select the, the beam object and the, Transform replicate. I'm going to move it up screen. That would be in case in this case down screens minus 17 inches So this is a way to move things precisely if you try to left click and drag with your mouse You'll never get anything precise and then uh, Are these three the other two go down roof or the other two that I'm fixing to create go up uh, up roof? Okay, so I'm going to click on Transform Replicate. I'm going to make two copies of the original. And I'm going to move each copy minus the thickness of, of the objects, which is what 1.75. Two copies, 1.75 each. Left click, done. 
There's your triple, triple LBL beam. And when I go to print this, I wouldn't leave the baseline on. That was just for setting it up because they might, that might confuse them. So I'm going to go over here to roofs, baselines, and turn that layer off now that we've finished our editing work. See now, and this CAD line, we probably don't need that there anymore. That was for reference. I'm going to delete that. What's that? Oh, that's a CAD line that I drew. I'm going to delete that. So now we've got our LVLs here, and then we, we're going to take this text and arrow and copy it just to save a few clicks. I'm going to move that from there up to here. Then we'll open this and change the text to three inch and three quarter <clears throat> and now they see that, they know what it is. Now, in terms of 3D, I don't know what this is going to look like. Now, in most cameras, they're not set to, to show framing. And when I show a camera view here, it's probably not going to show, see it doesn't show it. But, but we, you can go to the display options for this camera view set. Uh, plan view has its own display options. Each camera type has its own display options and elevation cameras have their own display options. So although this dialog looks like the same in each case, it's different from all the other display options. Now we'll go down to framing. And uh, I don't let's see the roof beams, I believe. So it'd be further down alphabetically. Yeah, see there it is and it's turned off. The red plus sign indicates that it's there, but it is, this indicates that it's visually invisible. We'll turn it on and it should, yeah, there we go. You mean a flat ceiling? Oh, you want a flat ceiling to go from here to here? Okay. No problem. What The way you do that in this software is you go over here and select the wall tools and a, the invisible wall tool. I'm going to draw one right collinear with that uh, LVL. And that sections this part of this room from this, this part. Now this part, I can go over here and then go to the structure tab and put a flat ceiling in it at eight feet. Now we can go back to that camera that I had open and it should show a flat ceiling now. Yeah, and it does. Oh, okay, I didn't know. <clears throat> so we'll go over here and go to the structure tab and raise the, well, it's 19 and 3 eighths, something close enough. Okay. And then it'll, the dialog box will then raise the ceiling to 10 feet. And then you're gonna have a, a no flat ceiling out here. Okay, good, then that's fairly accurate. Uh, let's see, now this over here is this wall poly lines that I haven't filled in. Um, are you gonna leave siding on this, on this room uh, like it's showing here? Well, what I would do if I were you, let's see, are you going to have this green material for the uh, fin finish? Oh, okay. How, how are the how are the wall interior walls here going to be finished? On this wall, you mean?
Okay. Well, let me show you a, a way to do this. I'm just going to click on that wall, and it selects the wall polyline, which represents this wall in 3D. I'm going to open it. And then, see, there, there it is in this dialog box. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the other side looks like it has sheetrock on it, and, the, and this side has siding. But we can change just this wall by going to the Materials tab and see there's a selection for exterior where, where the siding is. And the software considers this an exterior wall, although it's not an exterior wall now. But in its mechanical way, it doesn't understand that. So I'm going to just select a different material, and you can do this again later if you change your line. I'm going to go to Library Materials, and uh, we'll just go to t oh, down here to Tile. You mentioned Tile. as a, And uh, let's see, we'll go down to, uh, I'll just keep it simple. We'll go Subway Tile and, and pick some. And again, you can change this at will if you, you know, if you want to later. And without altering the structural way of the structuralness of the wall, see now it's showing that material. <clears throat> and if you want uh, this all the way, then you would just take the eye material eyedropper and then make sure it's in component mode. And then you can just click on this wall and, and it'll put the same material on the on its materials tab. And this is a, a a wall polyline problem, so I'm just going to move that over and fill in that gap like that. And then I'm going to take this. See, the wall poly, this software is really great, but it's not perfect. So I'm just going to take this wall polyline and reshape it to suit my own purposes. Now we still get, I think this is a crown mold or something. Let me click on it and see. Probably coming from the room dialog box. You have, probably have it set it as a default. Let's uh, uncheck that and check. Yeah, there's the crown mold. I thought so. I'm gonna in this room. I'm gonna delete it because it doesn't make much sense to have it. It's just mucking up the plan or visuals for the plan. See now it cleans that up. And the same thing's true in this room. I'm going to open it and get rid of the crown mold. Well, we, we could, but we just need to raise it up to where the ceiling is. You want to leave the crown mold? Okay, so we'll go to the moldings tab, uncheck that so we can select the crown mold. And you can see the, it's getting, it's set to the wrong ceiling height. This needs to be at uh, one, 19. Let's see what that looks like. Click and then watch the visual change. Yeah, now it's up here. And Home Designer Pro can't do slanted uh, crown mold. You can do that yourself, but uh, <clears throat> we, and we can't just put it on out here because it would go then straight across right here. So it's kind of a limit. In Chief Architect Premier, I can do it, but because I have additional tools, but it's not in Pro. And uh, we should probably do this in a way that Home Designer Pro can handle. And same thing on this wall, if you wanted to have showed sheetrock or whatever, use the same uh, ch changes, I, I, same tools here to make, make the changes to the individual walls. And you can have it however you want it. <coughs> I, I didn't understand your question. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, if you change the walls using the room dialog box, go over here to materials walls, it'll change all the walls. So that's, I wouldn't use that method. I would just click on the wall, open its dialog box, go to the materials tab and then make the material change on either the exterior or the interior side now obviously the software thinks the exterior side is the interior side so you have to kind of keep that straight in your own mind I mean, you can set that material to whatever you want without changing the wall type
I didn't quite understand your, your order. Yes. Oh, well, one, one way to do that, the easiest way would just be to go to the materials tab and you've got, uh, this is, you want it to be this color? Okay, then we'll just, Click on that, go over to plan materials and find color gray. I know it, it will. It's not going to color the material. It's going to replace, it's not going to color the siding. It's going to remove the siding. Let's see, I was looking for color gray. I should have paid more attention. Let me close that. Oh, charcoal. Okay. <clears throat> Should be there. It is true. Well, that's kind of dark. Are you sure you want that? Yeah, that looks the same. And it's just going to change the appearance, not the actuality of the material. It's still siding sitting there. It's just cut colored gray now. But you can't see the lines in it because it's no longer siding. It's this material. <clears throat> Over here, uh, what are the dimensions of the, of the solarium windows? Okay. Yeah, I just go to build roof and find skylight, left click, and it'll put in a, a two foot by two foot skylight. It just did. Now I'm going to click on that on the edge, other edge, and it will set it to five feet. And I'm going to move it away from the edge of the wall, but something like that. And then you want this whole thing to be skylight from one end to the other. Okay, so we'll set this to three feet. And then uh, it'd probably take a little while to figure out the, the, you know, where to, how many of these to put, but we can, how much space do you want in between each one? Okay, so I'm gonna, again, you go to transform replicate and I'm gonna make, uh, doesn't matter if I make too many copies, I'm gonna make seven copies and I'm gonna move each copy to the right the width of the object, which is three feet plus two feet, so that'd be five feet. And move this up right and click OK. And I'm gonna this one here, I'm gonna delete. Don't have room for that. That's that's pretty well centered. And since you don't know exactly what you're gonna have, that's probably good enough. And until you find out from the manufacturer what they actually sell. Uh, sure. Did you see the load build up? Oh, okay, that's a that's a question for a structural engineer, not for me. I I'm not trained for that. Yeah. 
Yep. Those skylights are going to need, or solarium windows are going to be have to, have to be strong enough to resist the snow load as well. Yeah. See, what I'd do is, I once I put this into plans, I would run it by a structural engineer and 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 maybe ask you know, about the snow loading here, and, and and he can tell you down to the nine decimal points exactly what if you this is workable. If it's not work, or if it is workable, what what the structure is going to have to be in order so to make ensure that it is. Absolutely not. It's not an engineer. Yeah, what about it? Uh-huh. Oh, you mean out here outside? Yeah. There's a couple of steps we need to do. I'm going to create a terrain perimeter. And this is just going to come in automatically, generically. It may or may not be correct. Now, where is... Where is the grade relative to the bottom of that door, actually? Level, okay. That, okay. So, um, what? Oh, I understand. I'm just gonna click on the terrain and open this dialog box and uncheck this automatic you know, presetting from the factory. And I'm gonna reduce this to 12, which will raise the terrain up eight inches. Let's see if that's enough. No, that's not quite enough. So I'm gonna raise it up uh, to another eight inches or so. That's probably too much. Yeah, the door is slightly below the terrain, so I need to lower the terrain. And we'll lower it three inches, and so bring this up to seven inches. Yeah, so now we've got a little space there. And the space is so that I can draw the patio on it. <coughs> With a terrain plane there, I can then go to terrain feature rectangular feature. And you can tell me if this is wrong, but that there's a starting point and that'll be a, the default material on, on those things are concrete. So there's your... Okay, we'll just click on the object and there's a automatic dimension to the wall, 23 feet. And you can thicken this object. See, it comes in at just, it's just one inch thick. Now, I know you said it's four inches thick, and we, we can change that. I'm gonna change the um, thickness to uh, four. I'm at the height to four, and the thickness to four, but that's gonna be on top of the terrain plane. We may need to lower that for it to look right. I'm going back to the camera. Yeah, it's over the door threshold now, so uh, I can lower the terrain or I can lower lower this back to where it was. And you, you just say with text on it that it's four inches thick. It doesn't have to actually be four inches thick. It is there to represent an object and, and then you annotate it to say, say exactly what it is. <coughs> Yeah, if you if you want them, if you want that, then you'll have to we'll have to do this with a slab, and that's okay. I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to use this tool here, <coughs> convert to plain polyline, and I'm going to convert it again, but this time to a slab. 
and a slab is an actual three-dimensional custom-made object which has actual thickness and so forth and it's four inches thick now i have to tell it elevation at the bottom <coughs> let's just leave it there and, and then check it in a camera and it, that's going to be a little bit high so i'm going to click on it and change the uh believe the thickness at four inches <coughs> excuse me i'm going to put the elevation at minus uh eight inches we'll just do evaluate how it looks it's still a little bit high you can click and see the bottom of the door threshold that's what i'm using to evaluate that i'm going to put it at minus 12. what is it Whoop, it disappeared under the terrain <laughs> so i'm going to hit Control z on my keyboard <coughs> bring it back in the site and we'll set it to minus 10. i just wanted to to stick to the terrain there you go. I can see under the threshold here, and I can see the concrete. You know, what is, what are these? Oh, okay. We'll just delete them. I didn't notice them. <laughs> I, I noticed them a moment ago, but it didn't, it didn't occur to me that they were scarlet. Okay, that cleaned that up. And from this, you should be able to make straightforward plans that other building professionals can quickly understand and fit into, into the house. Okay, so is that, is that it for today? Okay. Uh, let's see, when do you remember when we started? Yeah, keep in mind that uh, I'm in a di different time zone. I'm in central. Uh-huh. Okay, well, we'll just say uh, three hours. So that's uh, three times 75 is uh, 225. And I, when I send this file back to you, which I will do at the end of the meeting, I'll also send you a PDF invoice for that amount. And, and <clears throat> you can uh, drop, just drop a, a check in the mail to, to my postal address, which is part of my e email address, which I'll, I'll send you. And we can just do it that way. No, I don't. I, I have a PayPal account where you can use a a, a, a credit card. I, you ever use PayPal before? Okay. Would you you want me to just send you a PayPal invoice? Okay, I'll do that then. Yeah, thank you, sir. Have a good day, and uh, I'll send you a link to the video. It, it'll be a, a YouTube video, which you can access uh, at your convenience. And uh, the files I'll directly email to, email to you with, with the uh, invoice attached. Sure. <clears throat> well, depending on your building authority, they, they may want to know, but you can, oh, well, Pro doesn't do that. Let's see, uh, this is just a, is this a six-inch wall or a, or a four-inch wall? Okay, then it'd be two by sixes, and you, you say on center how, how many uh, studs you're going to have in that wall, and that's all you need to tell them.
go have two bottom plates, one one upper plate, and then say 16 inch on in, in, on center or 12 inch on center, whatever you intend to do, and then that's all they needed to know. <clears throat> okay. Well, good. Thank you. Yeah, I thought we got along pretty well. All right. Have a good day, sir. Uh-huh.